dude. That music, though. Another episode Ooh. of The Huddle. And it's funny because I normally have the video on and I hear the music in the background. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up. Oh, look at that. I have it muted. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition <laughs> of The Huddle. I will tell you what. Um, after we ended yesterday's episode, even more breaking news happened. Even more breaking news happened this morning. Even more breaking news happened five seconds ago. The NFL is absolutely buzzing. So five I can seconds imagine. ago? What happened? Wait, five seconds ago? Oh, okay, never mind. I thought you were confirming it for a second. So I thought you were <laughs> confirming it for a second. I was just being, you know, I was being overzealous. But Richie, how's life, man? Talk to me. Life is excellent. I'm alive. Yeah. I'm breathing in oxygen. I am present. I'm with you boys live on the huddle. I'm yeah. looking at 64 live viewers. I mean, life doesn't get better than this, right? So things doesn't. are great for me, and I'm hopeful that things are great for everybody in the chat. Hope you guys are having a great day because we got a fun show today because the NFL free agency is right around the corner. We're one weekend away, a couple more sleeps, and then Monday, the legal tampering period is going to be hectic here on the huddle. Cannot thank you all enough for all the support because I'm noticing BetUS TV's subscriber count is skyrocketing. We're at 5.6, thousand subscribers. So don't forget, hit that like button and subscribe. We really, really do appreciate you guys. I've been having a lot of fun on the huddle and it's all because of you guys in the chat watching and making all this happen. So I love each and every single second of it. TD, man, interesting outfit. Really diving in right to the Miami Dolphins orange today. What's going on with you, bro? Uh, we just got the Super Bowl missing piece. You know, John o. Smith, we'll talk about that Thank later God, in the show. Man. Um, but All listen, man, <laughs> I'm excited, man. Thank you, everybody watching right now and entering the huddle. Let's have another great episode. It's too much to talk about, man. So much going on in the NFL. And I'm going to be honest with you. My mind is blown with some of these things that are happening right now around the league. It really is, man. It really is. And you know what? Like, we have a variety of topics today, ladies and gentlemen, that we are certainly going to go in depth with. However, I do plan the show normally before 11 a.m. EST. And then once that happens, we tend to get some more and more news that rolls on it. Number one is Johnny Smith being with the Miami Dolphins. So we are going to discuss that. Russell Wilson having a meeting with the damn Pittsburgh Steelers. That's going to be something we're going to try and squeeze in and have a conversation. Um, I'll tell you what, listen, the first topic was supposed to be Xavier Howard. All right. He ended up having an interview and he said verbatim, he said, the door is closed. I have nothing left to give to Miami going into it. TD, I kind of wanted you to expand on that and feel free <laughs> to go on a John U. Smith tangent. So me and Richie can lay you down easy. Talk to us. I'm not sure he said he doesn't have anything to give Miami anymore, but it looks like we got some co contradicting stories out of Miami. The general manager had previously let us know that, you know, um, Xavier Howard is pretty much a cap casualty. You know, they tried to, quote unquote, maybe restructure, you know, pay, take a pay cut in which he declined. Um, this was what was believed. And then our general manager finished by saying, you know, the door is still open for him to return. You know, they may, you know, still they're going to be in contact with him and the agent ongoing because, you know, if the market isn't out there, you know, they want to still bring him out. And he kind of slammed that door in in the general manager's face today and basically said, um, it's a wrap. That is, there ain't no possibility I'm coming back to Miami. This is more than just suggestive of, they don't want me, that's not true. This is more so, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. And I don't, uh, I, I mean, one can speculate. Stop, Richie. One can, <laughs> specu one can speculate why he's kind of like taking that approach, but it's like a slam door shut and definitive. And he made it clear, I want to go to a team who's made it deep in the playoffs, who's ready to win now, who's trying to win a Super Bowl. I want to win. And then it's sad. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, uh, I'm not entertaining Richie and them Jets, but I'll just say this to close on this. Um, 
you know, he left the possibility to go back to his hometown in Houston. He wants to go to a contending team. Um, and it's sad that players like him, right, who have been all pro, who's made um, Pro Bowls, you know, they're one of the NFL greater players in their career, but have zero playoff success. Zero. And that's the story of the Miami Dolphins. Even when you go back to some of our greats with Jason Taylor, Zach Thomas, Cam Wake, some of the greatest players at their position of all time. But where is the playoff success? And that's what has to change in Miami and the culture. Interesting. And so I do want to hear about John U. Smith, my friend. All right. Breaking news. This is. This, of course, was a couple of hours ago. Yesterday, we heard that he was meeting with Miami, tight end, uh, known for his time over in Tennessee. And then he ended up spending a stint over with the Patriots. And then he spent a stint with the Atlanta Falcons this previous year. However, the Miami Dolphins have a new weapon, a team that I would say hasn't really had a credible tight end in quite some time, (laughs) like a credible one, like one that was like regularly used, even ones that were talented for some reason weren't utilized as much as they should have been. TD, what does this mean for the Miami Dolphins with the arrival of Johnny Smith? Well, I told you at the beginning of the show, this um, signifies Super Bowl. You know, the beginning of building a roster that's going to be able to compete, trying to lock down every position. Does this mean we're going to win the Super Bowl? No, but it's um, headed in the right direction. Uh, what I will say about this, though, is there's some pros and there's some cons to bringing John U. Smith on this roster, okay? First of all, when you look at the contract, that's the neutral thing for me. You know, I was very skeptical. You know, Spotrack had him at a two-year, $12 million contract is what he might be worth uh we were able to get him for two year five million dollar contract i was hoping that the miami dolphins didn't spend more than four million dollars a year looks like they spent um about five million a year for him okay. um and it might be incentive based because they say up to 10 million and i can deal with that if it is incentive based if it's raw five million um it's just one extra million you know we don't cry about it but we have so many holes that I feel like every penny you can save needs to go to some of the other holes, especially when you have a tight end on a roster in Durham Smythe, who's an 82% completion percentage guy who catches the ball at one of the highest rates in the NFL. And we don't utilize the tight end in this offense, but it leads me to think outside the box for this move. I don't want to look at John o. Smith and think of him as the guy who's going to come in and take over for Durham Smythe and be the primary guy because there aren't enough targets to go around for him. But it makes me think outside the box to say, maybe our offense is about to take a shift. Maybe our system is going to be adjusted and change. And maybe we're going to utilize him in a more vocal way, um, pointed way, instead of always trying to force feed Tyreek and Waddle, but spreading the ball out. Can our quarterback handle that? Can our quarterback execute that? Time will tell. But I think that that's why they prioritize this move to switch things up and um, take another approach on offense because there are certain teams that seem to have our number and know exactly how to defend us, and our system is starting to get figured out more and more, and they're going to have to be more dynamic in order to have team success next season, and I think bringing a guy like John U. Smith is gives us the flexibility and the ability to make even more explosive ways in different ways. So that's what I love about the move. Um, the thing that I don't like about the move, he's one of the worst run blocking tight ends in the NFL now. He's a good pass blocking tight end, but one of the worst, even PFF, I had to look it up. They had him at a 43 for run blocking. And that makes me a little concerned that he might be a tail on the field. Yeah. When he's on the field, pass blocking, or he's going out for a pass. Um, And I don't like players like that because you kind of give certain things away. Now, can he become a better run blocker? Time will tell. We'll see. But that's an area that I'm not very fond of and not not very happy about. Richie, thoughts on Jonu Smith joining the Miami Dolphins? Does this uh, make you fear the Dolphins' offense more? Ah! I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to answer it nicely, no. Is it a good move for the Dolphins? Absolutely. I think if you look at the Miami Dolphins' offense, the one position that they were not – great at was tight end you love their receivers you love their running backs quarterback um an offensive line 
you know, injuries. But the tight end room, you never really looked at it and like, oh, wow, they, they got a, a guy that's absolutely a weapon. But I really do genuinely believe he fits in exactly what the Miami Dolphins do as an offense, and that's yak. I mean, you talk about, oh, Tua Tagovailoa, he led the team. He led the NFL in passing yards. Well, why? Because he throws a three-yard pass for the guy to go 80 yards with the ball. So John o. Smith fits that bill, and I think that's a beneficial for the um, – he's very – going to help out the overall structure of the offense. Does this move the needle for me? No. I mean, am I more scared of the Miami Dolphins offense because of this? No. You know, I'm still more fearful of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle because those are the two, you know, elite pieces of that team. I mean, I'm not really looking at this as a, a, a needle mover for the Miami Dolphins personally, but I do think it's a solid move that they have to make. It's cur- with their current cap situation. They can't be splashy. You can't expect them to go out there and get the, the top tier guys. So, you know, getting him on that type of contract, I think it's a solid move and especially have uh, get it done before free agency officially begins. I don't know. It's a solid move. Definitely for a position group. That's not their best. I think now he's their number one tight end. Um, I mean, this was a guy who was backing up Kyle Pitts last year and got all, all the, uh, you know, he's up there as a veteran. He's a win now type of player. But like, dude, he's getting shut down against the Jets. So I'm not really worried. But um, yeah, it's a good move. Congrats. Well, Dan, 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 at the end of the day, the Jets already can't stop Tyreek and Waddle. So at the end of the day, adding John U. Smith, they're worried. They won't admit it, but they're definitely worried. This is like petrified, actually. The, this is like the thing that basically says we have no cho- choice. They keep getting swept by the Dolphins. Where, where's their solution to that? What, what do you mean we keep getting swept? Why are you acting like you swept us back-to-back years? Well, you got swept this year. So and don't say we keep getting swept. Getting swept. We, got, we got swept last year. And you're getting swept this year. So I, well, feel, like, so I feel like with the rivalry right between TD and Richie has taken a step. For the past couple <laughs> of years – Richie, myself, and TD have been doing content together for about how long, boys? Like four or five years, I think. Yeah. Fourth year coming up. And like I think the rivalry is really starting to build between Richie and TD. Like the growth that I have seen in this saga is quite interesting. Because you know he's coming. And, and I have no idea why, because my team is way know. more superior. Oh, it I know why. It makes sense. I know why. Because, <laughs> because I am not I'm here. not someone after a while. I'm not someone that's going to allow you to say the nonsense that you say and just go like, you know, unnoticed. Like, I got to call you out for the stuff that you say and like just bring it to the surface because some people hear you and don't say anything and just let it just like go by. I'm not going to be able to let that happen. I Yo, cannot let smoke. you say some things. Sorry, uh, little, Yo, little, that, uh, it's that green smoke coming up. We heating up, baby. We heating Sorry. up. Let me let me cool it down because Richie's gonna get me started. <laughs> Yo, you, oh, dude, the producers are doing it, man. Dude, we're heating up. I'm telling you, the huddle's coming. And hey, TD's terrified of the Jets. Bro, all year last year, you go to TD Finn's talk, man, no Jets defense is scary. And then he comes on here. Oh, they're trash. So, like, yeah, it's no, just, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, the defense is good, Richie. But again, y'all putting all y'all, 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 you're putting all your eggs in one basket, and it's Aaron Rodgers, and it's going to be another misery era for y'all. That's what y'all don't see. If coming, I'm putting all no our eggs why. in that basket, I mean, I don't know what that means. Dan, do you know what that means? Aren't they relying on one guy? He's supposed to be the savior, the hope of everything that's Jets related right now. So he's at least on Al Gaib. So it's yes. a Super Bowl. Okay, or, <laughs> so it's a Super Bowl or bus mentality. It's a Super Bowl or bus mentality, and I'm and I'm super interested to see how it plays out. But I will tell you sure. what, boys, I do want to move on because, as you know, J- Simmons ended up getting released from. The Denver Broncos. Dude, Just like this is this is where I just like it's so hard to but, you know pain myself because TD says these things and then Dan changes the topic as a professional should. He's like taming yeah. these two little dogs that are trying to like go after well, each other. Well, <laughs> here's the deal. I mean, like literally, just look at me as the moderator, like of this episode. Like, say for example, I think things are getting too heated. I move on, so but, we can hey, save it for later in the show. You gotta you gotta let the heat. Get boiled up. Hit the like button, folks. We're just getting started Please. here. Justin Simmons, Please. Jet. Continue. But listen, I will tell you this, okay? So Jets. I started off while planning this show. I wanted to talk about Justin Simmons. But then after I planned this specific topic, I ended up coming across an article, something that I think you boys might find pretty interesting. Somebody off of CBS Sports said that safeties 
are the new running back of 2024. Some of them are saying that safeties are the new running back. Because this year, for the past couple of days, there has been $100 million worth right now of safeties being released. And this article started going off that the league is starting to undervalue what safeties offer to the table. It goes in depth saying that since the NFL ended up really having a lot of too high safety sets, that quarterbacks really aren't stretching the field anymore. Vast majority of these passes are going to be like nine or 10 yards right in front of them. So the need for a safety isn't nearly as important. Hence why you see Poyer walking away. Hence why you see Simmons walking away. Somebody as young as Xavier McKinney walking away. These safety positions, unless you're an Antoine Winfield Jr., or say, for example, you're like a Derwin James, they don't want to pay safeties anymore. And I kind of wanted to start off with Richie and see if he sees any value in this. Are safeties the new running back of the NFL? Are they as important as what they were in the past? since these offenses have tended to evolve. Go ahead. I'll say this about the Jets' defense. I mean, the Jets have never prioritized their safety unit in terms of, like, the most they've ever invested in their safety position was a third-round pick. They never really give out, you know, high contracts to. And we get an undrafted free agent in Tony Adams, who's now our starting free safety. We signed Jordan Whitehead in free agency for a bargain of a contract. And now he's a free agent. So the Jets do have a hole at safety. But my point is, the Jets defense has been top five the past two years. And the safeties are not the reason for it. I don't want to take anything away from our safeties. They have a big, impactful, you know, they impact this Jets defense. And they're really that, you know, back end. They're the quarterback of the secondary. They keep everybody held accountable. My point is, I feel like corners, linebackers, defensive linemen, they're more of the, you know, priority for a defense where you can win and you can have an elite defense without having an all-pro caliber safety is my point. I feel like it's not a priority for a defense. They're not like, all right, we need to get a safety and build around him. It's kind of like, let's get this cornerback and this edge rusher and this linebacker and then let's like find a uh, a safety that can just like step up and play their job. I mean, you talk about the Bills, they've been having a safety duo for the last five or so years with Poyer and Hyde, who has been phenomenal. The Jets drafted Jamal Adams and Marcus May in the same draft, and those are our safety tandem for a little bit, but those were years ago. But I will say this. I think that Justin Simmons and even Jordan Poyer, they may not you know, demand a lot of money. And if I'm the Jets in a win-now season, I would absolutely love to take a little, you know, a little Justin Simmons to add to a, a defense that already includes Sauce Gardner, Michael Carter II, DJ Reed, and Tony Adams. You know what I mean? So, But it really comes down to the market value. I think that could be a sneaky good uh, move for the Jets to add to their strength, which is their secondary, because the, everything about the Jets offseason is about offense. We need to fi- figure out this offense. We need to figure out how can we build around Aaron Rodgers because that was the obvious issue last year. But I feel like some Jets fans are forgetting, hey, the defense is good, but why can't it get better with personnel? Right? Bryce Huff is walking. Why can't we add somebody new and fresh and different that maybe even elevate the guys around him and get this defense to another level that – we don't even know it's possible. So that's something to, n- to not rule out. But when it comes to the safety position in terms of value, and I don't see NFL teams, you know, going after, you know, the one guy that I feel like is a unicorn with this is Kyle Hamilton, right? Kyle Hamilton yeah. is an absolute dog for the Baltimore Ravens. He was a high, high coveted prospect. Even Jets fans were talking about drafting him when he came out. He eventually goes to Baltimore. He's a weapon. He is an absolute playmaker, and I feel like you have to be able to be a versatile piece that can line up all over the field to be a safety that's demanding a lot of money. You can't just be a typical you know, back-end safety. You have to line up on the line of scrimmage. You have to line up at linebacker. You have to line up in the slot. Line up at strong. Line up at free. I feel like that's really the evolution of the game is uh, the, uh, that position is becoming positionless. Right. Any NBA fans know that the evolution of basketball has become more positionless. It's less of like you play this position. That's it. It's more like, can you play all five? Can you play one to three? I feel like that's happening with the safety position where it's less just like you are a free safety and this is your job. At least that's, you know, the creative uh, minds and defense are really trying to get the most out of these players. So I think from the Jets perspective, I would absolutely Call up Poyer, call up Simmons. They fit exactly what we're trying to do in terms of, you know, a veteran that's trying to win to help out this defense even go to another level. See, the thing is, is that I feel like everybody is afraid to be like, oh, no, like we can't go after a Quandre Diggs. We can't go after a Jordan Poyer. We can't go after a Justin Simmons. 
based off of how all of these NFL organizations, like, dude, there are more safeties that are pending free agents coming up this year than any other position right now into free agency. These guys aren't going to be as expensive as you think. Because as that article pointed out, unless you are a perfect prospect, you were elite in every single part of your game, right? Like a dude that's going to create force fumbles, an absolute unit when it comes into like pass rush, an absolute unit when it comes into ball hawking, solid coverage. Like you need to be a perfect safety at this point. So many teams continuously prove that the safety position, you can get away with having a run-of-the-mill talent in the middle of the field. Perfect example is the Kansas City Chiefs. Name a Kansas City Chiefs safety right now off the top of your dome. Either of you two can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. Who? Who? Reed. What's his name? (laughs) See? What's his name? (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) TD. TD, man. What are your thoughts on this shift? Do you think it's permanent? What's the NFL trying to do? Why are defenses moving away from the importance of a safety? I was right, Justin Reed. I knew it, Dan. Reed. See, but you had to look it up. But I wanted to make sure I was correct. <laughs> yeah, Fact-checking myself. Justin Reed, baby. Mike Edwards, never heard of him. <laughs> the other safety. Yeah, Mike Edwards, never heard of him. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, all right, so I, I, I disagree. I don't oh. think the – I was – no – no, I don't think the NFL is moving away from the safeties or prioritizing them. I think that right now we're seeing an influx of the result of overreacting with safeties a few years ago. Okay? Remember, this is a position that was being prioritized two and three years ago where the league spent a lot of money at the position where everybody wanted corners. They wanted safeties. If they didn't have great corners, they needed one or the other. This was an influx all around the NFL and because it's not just safeties, it's corners too, but they're going to keep those corners. But the safeties are the first domino. Why? Because all of those nice intermediate to good contracts are now coming to where there's no more dead cap. You know, there was a real push on safeties two and three years ago, and a lot of those guys are coming to the end of that guaranteed money. And let's be honest, we talk about Poyer getting old. We talk about Simmons getting older, you know, and these guys have heavy cap hits. And with all the safeties coming into the market, the team doesn't want to hold that cap hit. Go ahead and let them go. And the whole value, I agree with you, of the market for safeties are coming down. And now they'll be able to snatch up some safeties. Everybody, this is a safety free-for-all moment if you need one. So now this is an opportunity to get a real good quality safety that two years ago might have been worth eight is a 15 to 17 million. You can now grab them from between nine to 13 million. So this is an opportunity to buy cheap, get you a nice guy in. And we only got one safety on the roster. That's Javon Holland. We need a strong safety. You know, um, we have our free safety. We need the um, strong safety and we need a backup safety. So the Dolphins themselves, they're going to be in the market looking for safeties. But I don't think it's a target towards them. I just think a lot of those contracts um, were overinflated a few years ago when everybody freaked out because the wide receivers were eating. Remember, you know, we we had just left the era of um, what's the guy name with the Rams? He was with the Rams. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup, remember that era, Tyree, Cooper Cup, and all of that? Um, They reacted to what was coming in the league with the receivers. Then they kept going on it with corners and safeties with Justin Jefferson and everybody coming in. But a lot of those contracts have expired now, and so many are available. Like I said, the value is going down. You don't hold an expensive guy when the positional value is lower. You can go ahead and find a quality guy for the cheap now. So here's the deal as well, right? Like, I mean, I'm like noticing like a few people in the chat being like, no, like safeties are still important. But I mean, you look at what the league has done in the past three days. Mm -hmm. Big name safeties are gone. And I'm like, so while you were going on your tangent, right? Like I was trying to think of like NFL elite teams right now, like teams that like, got through the playoffs, teams that we regularly say, hey, listen, like this is an elite defense. 
for example, I was trying to think of the San Francisco 49ers. And granted, I don't know every single other NFL team's roster top to bottom like I do the Buffalo Bills, obviously. As I'm sure that Richie knows the Jets a hell of a lot better than any other team. And, you know, the Dolphins a hell of a lot better than any other team. But I can't even think off top of my head a safety on the San Francisco 49ers. Mm. I can't think of a safety on the 49ers. I couldn't think of a Kansas City Chiefs safety I mean, going Justin into Reed it. Justin Reed is a stud on the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah, most definitely here and there. But I feel like that, like, it's with the corner position, I like, I almost feel like slot corner has been a hell of a lot more important to these quote unquote elite defenses than safeties have been at the end of the day. I think that I've just been trying to justify why the Bills ended up walking away from Jordan Poyer. And then I've seen all these moves this past 24 hours where I'm like, you know, outside of Kyle Hamilton, Antoine Winfield, you know, I mean, what's the point? Yeah, I, th- I think point? on I think on the defense now, um, Dan, I think one of the most p- important positions now on defense is the middle linebacker. Yeah, one who can run, stop, and cover though that Which middle of the field. You're pushing a fake narrative that you're getting C.J. Mosley on the Dolphins, which is proven to be wrong day and day and day and day. And, by the way, y'all gonna cut y'all gonna cut him, Richie. You see a straight face like you uh, actually believe that. I can't tell. But, hey, continue the troll job. It's what TD Finn's talk does. Well, so well, don't worry, Richie, because he's going to come at me now. He's the main topic today, all right? And Richie's farting right now. He had oh, sorry, some, guys. Had some, uh, had some burritos. <laughs> so had some burritos a bit earlier. All right? And so I can smell it through <laughs> the computer screen. Main topic of today's video... I'm sure that all of you were salivating yesterday, especially everybody in the chat. Maybe you watched our show last night where you saw us just go in at each other. But the Buffalo Bills had a scorched earth day yesterday. A scorched earth day. I'm talking Mitch Morse, Jordan Poyer, Tredavious White, a variety of other players gone. Brandon Bean was making damn moves to get over the cap and a lot of people in Bill's Mafia went to bed almost in a state of PTSD, in pure shock. What the hell were they doing? They also ended up turning around and they signed Matt Hack, the punter, Super Bowl confirmed. And the MVP, <laughs> the Nickelodeon valuable player, Mitchell Trubisky, is back on the Buffalo Bills. A variety of moves, a lot of moves. Wow. And uh, this Bills team seems to be taking a transition of priorities. So I wanted to start off with TD. Your thoughts on the cleansing of the Buffalo Bills roster. Ladies and gentlemen, um, what you are witnessing here um, today um, and yesterday from the Buffalo Bills is the prime example of what I've been trying to explain to many people for several years now. It's when you have a quarterback that's good enough not to be good enough. Um, he's, I mean, just phenomenal talent, but just can't get his team over the hump, you know, in the biggest games, you know, Um, yeah, no, no, he couldn't either. He couldn't either. But, um, but here's the deal. They're still trying to go down this delusional road of trying to figure out how to get past the chiefs and they're okay. Maybe we need to revamp the defense. You know, how do you stop Mahomes? You got to stop them. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't stop Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. You just have to do more than him. And who's responsible to do more than him? The quarterback on the opposing team he's playing. The offense of the opposing team he's playing. But what does the Buffalo Bills do? They think they just need to be better on defense, in which they already have one of the better defenses in the NFL. They think they got to be better on defense to stop Patrick Mahomes. Just you can't make this up. At what point will they realize? I don't care what defense they have. You will not stop Patrick Mahomes. The only way to beat him is your quarterback has to outplay him. That's it. That's it. Go look at the quarterbacks that beat Patrick Mahomes. Do we need to name them? In every one of those games, it's rare, but the quarterback outplayed him. Brady, those guys, you need a quarterback who can outplay him in the biggest moment. And guess what? 
the quarterback may not even need to be better than him. But in the game against him, you got to outplay him. And Josh Allen never outplays Patrick Mahomes. The stats might look like he does more and things of that nature. But the one thing I'll tell you when you look at those games, Pat Mahomes don't make the big mistake late in the game. Pat Mahomes makes the big play late in the game. When you got Josh Allen, he throws it in the he throws football short. He was bumped. Um, he he calls heads or tails wrong. He whatever it is, it's on him. And the <laughs> Buffalo Bills are hustling backwards, and this is what they get for it. They're about to wait the next three years, thinking it's the defense. They're gonna read two their safeties and corners, thinking it's that. They'll never learn, ladies and gentlemen. They will never learn. So I have to respond, right? I have hold back, Dan. Don't hold back. I promise you it's very Richie, healthy. Richie, was I wrong? I have, no, I'm just letting Dan, because you, you attacked his team, so I want Dan to just not hold back how he feels to what you said. This is nothing to do with me. So I have to respond right here. And, like, surprisingly enough, I do actually agree with you, Ray, to a point where I believe that I feel like that we want to go all in on this offense right now. Because you look at the Buffalo Bills offense – vast majority of the starters are returning <laughs> outside of Gabe Davis, moving toward it. The defense, they're like, okay, listen, we are in a cap situation where we have a lot of cap surrounded around aging players north of 30. S vast majority are backups. And somebody in the chat, Roy, actually pounded this out perfectly. He said the biggest surprise yesterday out of all the moves the Buffalo Bills did make was that Vaughn Miller decided to take a pay cut. First off, giant shout out to Vaughn Miller for being a damn team player and taking a significant pay cut moving forward. So that way we can have a little bit more room to move with. Now, as far as the Bills defense is concerned, I think that we can all agree. So Richie, what's so funny, man? Why are you geeking out, bro? The chat loves what, T what TD's outfit today. They're <laughs> going TD Bees talk. <laughs> They yeah, wow. say I look like a school bus, man. They oh, say I look like a school bus, skinny. man. You look great, Trust man. Haters, man. No, keep it on. No, no, no. Hey, man, listen, bro. bro. He's been. Maybe I'm sorry. Taking us got, to school. I blame the chat, man. They, they want, the guy that said <laughs> TDB's talk. <laughs> TDB's talk, man. Oh, no. You got to put that snap back on. You're oh, right. man. I know. I know, man. I ain't worried about that. Right, listen. Oh, dude. Don't get bullied to change your outfit, man. Okay? Keep and it, so man. the producer has bullied me to take my tank top off yesterday. You know what I mean? I was so We're mad. professional here, Dan. We're professional. I was, yeah, dude, you're right. And so y'all like my polo? <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm yeah, stuck yeah, now. Yeah. I, got a, I got a hoodie on. I got to get my polo game up. Yo, dude, it's, it's all about the damn polo. Now, listen, guys, I will say there's 258 <laughs> of you watching right now. Vast majority of you are, I'm sure, making fun of TD's outfit. But please do pumpkin, us a favor. Somebody said if, pumpkin patch TD. <laughs> pumpkin patch TD. Pumpkin patch. All right, listen, man. Do us a favor. Smash the like button for us. Only 105 like buttons smashed. If you're being entertained with TD's outfit, all right, I think we can get 225 <laughs> like buttons. It looks like TD should have like a backpack on. He's getting ready to get picked up for school, and he's like back at 13 years old again. Turn the clock back, TD. We love it. I think you look great. This is a good look for thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Richie. You know, I'm going to ignore the haters, man. Don't yeah, worry dude, about you got, dude, you no. got to. Dude, you got to. Now, <laughs> right back to the Bills. I'm, so, I'm sorry, man. I'm so distracted right now. Um, so really back to the Bills, man. Here's the deal. I think that this team is well-coached <laughs> enough. It's well-coached enough to where I think that regardless of what player we plug and play, I'm still very high on chin being a new safety for this organization. I'm glad that rap ended up coming back. Um, I have all the faith in the world in Razul Douglas. I have all the faith in the world in Christian Benford to lock down the boundary, especially in that corner. And we still have one of the best slot corners in the game outside of Taron Johnson. So although we have a lot of money right now going into free agency or more money than initially anticipated, I don't expect us still to go out and sign any big name players. One thing I will say is, is that I can almost guarantee you any signing we have, for the most part, will not be above the age of 30. So the Simmons of the world, Michael Thomas of the world, by the way, he was released from the Saints. I'm sure a lot of your fan bases have hit you guys up individually being like, hey, man, I wonder if Michael Thomas would be a good fit for our team right now, man. What do you think? But I think the Buffalo Bills are damn 
dead set on getting as young as humanly possible. I'm excited to see what free agency calls for, but as long as I see Jeremy Chin on this roster, or if I see like an Xavier McKinney or something along those lines, maybe bring back AJ Epinesa, maybe bring back Daquan Jones, I will be a very happy guy. These were necessary moves, but let me tell you what, my expectations of how the Bills are going to perform next year have not changed. I'm still sitting, I'm still married to the hill, 12 to 13 wins, AFC East champs, nothing changes. We trim the fat. We have the best GM in the division, and I'm happy about it. Richie, Hope. thoughts? The window was like this two years ago. Oh, this two years ago. Last year, it was like this, and now we're witnessing the window close. It's closed, Richie. And Dude, now cool. we Lots. see Bills fans justify it, backpedaling. It's all part of the plan. Right now, you should be thinking to yourself, well, we had to cut the whole team. At least we won the Super Bowl. It's all good, right? We won the Super Bowl, so we're good. But that's not the case. You don't have a Super Bowl ring in that era when you had Josh Allen for cheap. Now his money's kicked in, and now this is where, guess what? Josh Allen, you thought he was, you know, a lot was on his shoulders in the past. His, the pressure for Josh Allen just leveled up even more because he had so much supporting cast around him. And now he's going to have le- not as much, in my opinion, especially from a defensive perspective. Like they, the, the heart and soul of the Buffalo Bills, that was the team you're supposed to win with, Right. You're supposed to win with Jordan Poirier. You're supposed to win with Mitch Morse as your center. These were the guys that were the win-now moves. So now they're going into a little transitional period where the win-now guys have to get cut in order for them to bring in new guys. And I feel like the the Bills have strapped themselves um, with cap, and this is why they had to make those, those moves. So, like, you see the Rams were in cap hell. You see that the Buccaneers were in cap hell. But that's justified. Why? Because they went all in, just like the Bills. But the difference is those two teams won Super Bowls. The Bills didn't. Now, I don't know if the Bills' window is officially, officially closed. I still think they're a playoff team. I still think they're the favorites to win the AFC East. And I still think they're a threat. Absolutely. But I think they're way more, they are way more vulnerable, in my opinion. I, don't, I think that Josh Allen now feels like a little more added pressure. I'm getting paid all this money. I took this big contract. The money's starting to kick in now. When we, you know, signed that contract two years ago, that money wasn't going to kick in until now. So now the window is closed. I mean, how many times did we say heading into two years ago, this is this this is Super Bowl or bust, Super Bowl or bust? Didn't happen last year. What was the conversation? This is it. I mean, the window is now or never. And what happened? Flat in the face to Mr. Patrick Mahomes. So now, how are the Bills going to adjust? How are they going to improve on a personnel standpoint? The only way the Bills can sustain what they do. <laughs> Or Shout get out. better is Shout their own out. players. Shout out Last Second Sports So in the chat. He says, go to BetUS and smash the Bills to win the division because Allen clears all those bums and the QBs in the East. Hey, Mr. <laughs> My boy! Jesse has a, a personal you know, relationship with Josh Allen, okay? So he, he happens to love Josh Allen more than, more than most. I respect you, Jesse. I respect you. You calling Aaron Rodgers a bum? What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> he called Aaron Rodgers a on- bum. Uh oh, TD brought it out. Get out of here, bro. I mean, he had the chance. I mean, I'm just, I mean, tell me where the lie. Where did I lie, Dan? Call me out. So, here's the deal, man. Like, I feel like everyone's been attempting to manifest the downfall of the Buffalo Bills for like two or three years. No, we said the window was open. These going into this this past year, we we said that. We one just told thing, you it was coming. It's one thing I can tell all of you, everybody watching. And everyone that is currently hosting this television show, as long as Josh Allen is behind center in Buffalo, the window is open. The window is open, my friends. (laughs) This game is such a game of inches. If you were to go back out of all the previous years in the playoffs, if only one or two plays turned out differently, we would be having an entire different conversation. If the Buffalo Bills, out of all of like their heartbreaks in the playoffs, were to just get absolutely smoked, smoked on every single playoff blunder, 
that they saw, then yeah, I would say, okay, yeah, I'm nervous, man. I'm concerned that Poyer is gone in the secondary. I am concerned uh, that Vaughn Miller's production has taken a spiral downhill. I'm concerned that Gabe Davis is going to be gone. No, as long as Josh Allen is under center, the window is open. Here's, here's what I don't understand, though, Dan. I ask you this question every week, and you don't ever have a good answer for it. Okay. How are you? How are y'all gonna get over the hump, dude? It's a game of inches, baby. <laughs> game yeah, of but, inches. Uh, but but y'all coming up short. Quantity, my friend. Quantity, probability. The probability over quality increase, and so the probability will increase the more opportunities that we have. But there's teams around you that are getting better, while the bills are kind of fizzling at the same, well, if not so, progressing. So so the biggest thing. So the biggest thing is, is, is that, yes, we've seen a lot of departures from our defense and regressions from our defense this offseason. That I'm not going to, you know, talk down on or deny, but the Buffalo Bills defense was literally in body bags for half of the season, and we still were able to go as far as we could. So in my eyes right now, we have the exact same defensive production. This is before free agency in the draft even come in that we had ending the 2023 season right now. We literally, listen, if you were to put this exact same Bills defense out right now on the field starting week one, no free agency, no draft whatsoever, we would have the exact same season. DeMar Hamlin is your starting corner right now, and you're going to sit here and tell these people this. Listen, I'm not going to let you lie to these people. We ended up signing Taylor Rapp. Stop. And listen, man, listen, please do me a favor and hang on to this meme as long as you can. Because once we sign Jeremy Chin, we draft Cole Bishop out of Utah in the third round. The whole Jamar Hamlin, he's your thing, dude. Dude, I'm pissed off he wasn't. I'm pissed off that dude wasn't cut. And to be honest with you, I'm very upset he wasn't cut. I'm surprised he survived. We started it's, speaking it's out. And, and I do got to say, I, I amend you. I think you are handling the collapse of the Buffalo Bills very professionally. I hate you guys. And, and you have a level head. You're not panicking, right? You easily yeah. could just be in panic mode, but you're not. You're grounded. You are confident. And you believe yeah. in your team with a straight face. And but, I have to amend you with that. This but, man out of his own should, mouth said, like, kill a rap. But, but how are you... <laughs> But how are you surprised that I'm not confident? Based off of what the Bills were able to do with Diggs not being involved whatsoever for the majority of the year, and we did everything we did offensively with two rookies and a second-year running back. So how could I not be confident? So how could I not be confident when Diggs wasn't even involved past week six? And we were able... And we were able to go off with an injured-ass defense, and the only offensive weapons we had was a second-year running back in James Cook, a rookie tight end in Dalton Cade, and a second-year slot receiver. And your defense is getting worse, which means your offense needs to do even more, and they can't do more than they already are doing. And so I think that if you were to look at the Buffalo Bills season last year, I think that you could credit what we ended up doing, and you would have to give it to our offense. You wouldn't give it to our defense as into why the Buffalo Bills were able to go on that run. I wouldn't give a single piece of credit to the Buffalo Bills defense from the time yeah, we were 6-6 six and, six and won the division. But it's about to get even worse, though. Well, the offense is about to get even better. So well, how? Up, with what how? addition? Who, who are you adding to the offense to make this so much better? Gabe Davis is walking. I mean... I mean Gabe, wh- dude, dude, listen, man. I feel like everybody is that Brian isn't Thomas? a Bills fan... Brian Thomas? Is I feel that- like everybody that isn't a Bills fan thinks that Gabe Davis is just like some like calling from the next level. There's a reason why, well, like when you tu- like when you tune into ESPN or Good Morning Football, that the only highlights they ever show of Gabe Davis being like, oh my God, he's going to be a great free agent, are three games. They can only pull up three games worth of highlights when they're talking about Gabe Davis being a pending free agent. The coaching staff knows more than somebody that's watching these games going into it. There were several games where Gabe Davis wasn't even targeted, let alone recorded a reception at the end of the day. I'm not saying that he's a bad receiver, but I'm not saying that he's a wide receiver too for this team. 
what I'm we're not saying, saying he can't be a wide receiver too. So but how I'm are you getting better though? How does the Brian offense Thomas improve? Junior, does and the so offense Brian, improve personnel wise, or do people get better on the team? Like, is Josh Allen going to another level? Are you? No, uh, is it KK he, uh, that's taking another be, step? Like, gonna, is there a? a it's going to be this. Listen, there's so many different reasons why Bills fans can stay optimistic. Number <laughs> one, number one is is that what Joe Brady was able to do with an already established playbook that was not his. Joe Brady was able to take this offense to a next level with a playbook that was not his own, and he was able to boil it down into a simplification and just pick and choose plays that would work. When you switch over to an offensive coordinator, you don't have a brand new playbook. You do not. He had to work with the ingredients that the previous chef had in the cabinet. Now we have a brand new offensive coordinator where he's finally going to be able to put together his own playbook. He's going to continue to run the damn ball with James Cook. We have the youth on offense, and I have a feeling this Buffalo Bills offense is what's going to carry. And the Buffalo Bills defense is still going to be top five. That's what I will say. I trust in this coaching staff to be able to develop whoever we plug and play. And by the way, don't even say, oh, my God, Trey White's gone. We haven't had him in two years. And so we haven't had Trey White in two years, bro. What Poyer. do you mean we're good? And with Jordan Poyer, I'm going to miss Jordan Poyer for sure, but we've already established on the show by ourselves that you don't need to have an elite safety to have an elite defense. I think the league is making that situation. And then last second sports, Jesse, my boy, saying Gabe Davis is not good. He is not good. I will say that. He is not All right, a- Lat. All right, Jesse. It's official. You got to start <laughs> making Bills content or something. I love Jesse, man. Listen, bro. Like, dude, Come on, Jesse. Let's he's, see some Bills content. He's a, <laughs> dude, he's a Bills supporter, and I love the guy. I do. I love him, too. I think he's a great, great guy. I love Jesse. But yeah, Dan, I, I love your optimism for your team. It's but admirable. You're not telling us anything that's going to get y'all over the hump and how y'all supposed to be better. At the end of the day, the Bills fans, y'all going to ride because you got Josh Allen, but your team is imploding, okay? They are falling. They're they're starting to literally, like, it's like the engines just shut off on a helicopter. You're going nowhere but down at the end of the day. Josh Allen will still help you all get around eight to nine wins a season. Oh, get uh, out of here, bro. And, and you got to hope that that's good enough to get in a wild card. At the end of the day, it's over for the Bills. That, that QB contract. That's this. See what y'all are noticing right now is the QB contract starting to kick in. That's what you're noticing, and they're not going to be able to really sign a lot of guys on long term deals because those hits each year after this get nasty. So, dude, dude, dude. yes, yeah, yeah, Dan. Josh Allen deserves every single penny of his contract. The only current quarterback that is considered to be a Big paid or a high paid quarterback that deserves every single penny is Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Joe what Burrow can stay healthy. Joe Burrow can stay healthy. Oh, you hate Lamar that man Jackson, so much. But he can win. Can't stay healthy. This is Joe the first Burrow year where he was Joe healthy. Joe Burrow be Patrick it. Mahomes. Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen are the only quarterbacks that, in my opinion, are fairly paid. Based off of their production. No, you're not fairly paid. Y'all overpaid Josh Allen because you should have put a clause in his contract. Every interception is minus a million dollars, and he'd owe you. He'd owe you money. So that's the problem. Hey, would you rather? And so, would you rather have a quarterback that throws like 15 plus interceptions, but you always win the division and you always make noise in the playoffs, or would you rather have a quarterback that throws less than 10 interceptions each and every single season? And it gets first rounded. And well, there's also win. some context that you have to add that according to you, you. that some of those games Thank you. you lose it's because of what? Because Josh of Allen. the interceptions. Because That's because it. apparently I'll go back. I have to go back to it. Always will. Week one, the Jets didn't beat the Bills. Josh Allen lost, which means Facts. Josh Allen, if you want to go that route, Josh Allen lost you a game in your eyes. There's, there's, all right. And there's other examples of that too. Mm-hmm. There's... Yeah, but regular season wins. We're talking about a quarterback in Josh Allen that has. He hasn't proved to do in the playoffs either. He has one of the lowest interception rates in the playoffs. Out of and any keep losing. Quarterback. Because he because the bad play from him isn't an interception in the playoffs. It's an underthrow, quote unquote, bump. It's an well, underthrown pass. Right. It's you a, can only it's, think of one example of an underthrow, and that was that week three banner. And, and guess what? Guess, guess what? Guess what? Years ago. Guess what? He picked heads. 
Heads or tails, Dan. 13 seconds left. I'm farting right now in case anybody knows <laughs> what that is. Oh, my God. It's Josh Allen is going to be the end of y'all. He is a great quarterback, but in the biggest moment, he cannot rise at the level of the opposing quarterback like Patrick Mahomes. So what are the he examples? He just can't. And so the coin toss. He, he can't rise to the and occasion, so every single, bro. All right, listen. Every single big moment that I can think of that like you're probably thinking in your head right now was when the ball was out of Josh Allen's hands. No, it when wasn't. Was he missed Shakir had- in the end zone. Yeah. He could have won. He missed and, Shakir in the end zone. And also, Dan, I got to go back to your take that you said. I can't let you just go and say that without it being just absolutely blasphemous. I mean, you're saying Josh Allen and Mahomes are the only quarterbacks that deserve the money they're getting paid. Yes. You have something weird against Lamar Jackson. Still and to this Joe day. Burrow. And, and Joe, Joe Burrow. Burrow. Joe Burrow, I, I understand that Dan will always, always hate that. But Lamar... He deserves every penny that he's getting paid, bro. He is a proven winner, and he is an absolute has all way more double the accolades that Josh Allen will ever have. It feels like in his entire career, both drafted the same draft class. Lamar Jackson has all the accolades. Mm. Josh Allen has nothing, and Lamar mm. Jackson's done more with uh, less. I mean, I don't uh, know. What, and he's won, winning. And I know you keep saying quarterback is quarterback's not a winning stat, but he wins. He wins the accolades. He's the most valuable player in the league, not once but twice. And you can go into the box score and say if it was uh, worth it or not. But Lamar Jackson definitely deserves the money he's getting paid. 110%. Where's Where's Josh Allen MVPs, Richie? Don't see him. I just see him in the conversation. That's it. I see him a nomination. Hmm. Well, at the end of the day, I can confidently say that both of the men that are on both of my sides would die for Josh Allen. Oh. Be the quarterback right now, I can Stop. say that, and they I have mean, to say it because they know that that is correct. I just can't let you go and just believe that Josh Allen's up here and Lamar and Joe Burrow way below him when both Listen. Burrow and Lamar are above Josh Allen. Like I, I can't let you this. say that, and you say it with such a damn Mitchell Listen. smirk that you're like, Listen, yeah, Josh. vast majority, no. vast majority of Baltimore Ravens fans would have Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson. What are you vast talking majority. about? Vast majority of them would. Stop it. Stop um, it. We were to ask Stop Baltimore it. Ravens fans. Ravens fans? At least 50% would rather Josh Allen than, than Lamar I mean, Jackson. you ask NFL fans, maybe. But, like, Ravens fans? Any Ravens fans in the chat want to want to answer that question? I mean, so Lamar like, Jackson, to this point, has proven to be the better player. It's literally objective. Let's talk about playoff performances, though. I think they would take Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson in playoff time. Look at who you played in the playoffs. Do I need to get my list out with Mac Jones on it? I think, Dude, uh, I think listen. you might have to. You, Meeting. Josh Allen, will be a whole bunch of bum quarterbacks in the playoffs. Dude, those quarterbacks aren't throwing pads on with the defense. My friend, no, they're not no. throwing pads on with the defense. That is, it the, doesn't, it doesn't matter. The, it's bro, about in, in the playoffs. How does the quarterback perform? Olds watching this show, you're brainwashing these children on the show, being like, oh, ha, ha. yeah, dude, he beat these quarterbacks, man, dude. It doesn't make logical sense, my friend. Mac Jones wasn't out there taking snaps as a linebacker, my friend. No. Taking snaps as a slot corner. Listen, Josh Allen. Listen, who yeah. who did he the, the coach? Is. Was, is a that right? was it Garner Minshew? Mason Rudolph, yeah. Mac Jones. Quarterbacks don't Skyler face. Thompson. Listen, Come on, quarterbacks bro. Quarterbacks don't face. All right, TD. What about your <laughs> playoff record? Getting smoked by the Chiefs. Getting embarrassed by the Chiefs. Embarrassed. <laughs> because they quarterback was better than ours. At you least I can admit it. Dude, you dude, you can't go pound for pound. At least the Bills walk yeah, away with pride. <laughs> At least we can walk away with pride every single time we go. Yo, up yo, I can't, you can't walk <laughs> away with pride when you never won a Super Bowl. You never won a Super Bowl a day in your life. Dude, bust off your history book. <laughs> Dan, Dan, at least we have a history. That's the point. Y'all don't have a history. And you know what? You said some earlier in the show that I'm going to call out right now. Talk about we, if we just keep going, the, possi- the probability will eventually win one. No, Dan, you have to have precedent for probability to take place. If you never won a Super Bowl, the probability that you will is zero. So what's with the glaze? Zero. So, so what's with the glazing of Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson all the time? Why do I? Well, well, you, well, you, so you know why? Bad. You know why? 
You know why? You know, you know the the most uh, the, the the craziest part about it all. The craziest part about it all is where is your Super Bowl appearance? At least a Super Bowl appearance, Josh Allen. Yeah. Lose in the Super Bowl at least. Dude. Joe Burrow went to the Super Dude. Bowl. Dude. Dude. You can't even get to the big game with him. Dude. We're sitting at the whole like, playoff success. You want to know what Josh I, Allen record is in the playoffs? I Dude. Dude, I feel like all right. Like I want to look five at five and five. He and is a five hundred average quarterback in the playoffs. Five so, for five. So I want to look at the AFC East as a business corporation, where an entry level kid fresh out of college is giving shit to a CFO for not making CEO. That's basically how I'm taking this whole conversation right now. Somebody that hasn't even been as far, nearly. Oh, my gosh. You're talking about CEO stuff. That's, 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 that's championship that's, stuff. You're more <laughs> lower management, Dude, supervisor Dude, development Dude, program. That's what the bills are. TD, I, dude, I wish you held the Miami CEO. Dolphins. CEO. Dude, TD, I wish you held <laughs> Tua to the pedestal of expectations that you hold Josh Allen. See, this is I, the problem I have with you, though, Dan. At least I'm realistic about Tua. I'm not sitting up here telling you that he's literally going to win the Super Bowl this year. And he's, yeah, you, are. you know, yeah, no, you I just said, I just yeah, said, yeah, you I just, do. He better, I just said, every year you say Super Bowl, I, Super Bowl, baby, I, Super Bowl, Tua, MVP. I said, I said, I'm not I said the forget Dolphins everything I heard from you this past year. I said year. the Dolphins going to win the Super Bowl. The problem with Dan is he can't even get to the big dance and he talk about Josh Allen like he won. Of the best quarterbacks trying to compare him to Lamar Jackson. Y'all 500 in the playoff yourself. You are 500 in the playoff and got the nerve to run your mouth. Stop it, man. Stop, hey. Dan Mitchell. Man, hey, you know what? I am excited to have this conversation once we can relate. Um, there, oh, well, by, by the way, Dan, there is a reason why y'all been to five wild card games. You haven't even had had the the, the appropriate bye week. See, this is what I'm talking about. Y'all are so far behind the Chiefs, and y'all keep on rinsing and repeating and thinking you can get over the hump. It's so a wrap, bro. Behind it's are you from the, the Chiefs? You so know what? Are you from the Chiefs? Cl closer, to, closer to them than y'all? You are nuts. All right, we, listen. We what just ha left. What's happening this offseason? We're closer than the Buffalo Bills. All right, listen. I'm about to have a heart attack on stream. So we have two minutes left. Uh, let's go on ahead. Um, <laughs> let's <laughs> sound off, <laughs> let everybody say their piece. Richie, what's going on, man? How you doing? Uh, it felt great to just sit back and observe one of these and not be involved. Um, definitely entertaining for sure. Uh, I saw someone in the chat say TD solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said the bottom. Somebody earlier said the bottom part of a candy corn or something. Oh my <laughs> gosh, yeah. you guys are too much in the chat, man. TD Eclipse. Uh, thank you guys so much for keeping this fun and entertaining. Um, Dan and TD, you guys went at it, and I think we're gonna have to clip that and uh, make a little edit. See what the people think. But thank you all for tuning in. Tomorrow's gonna be even better. Don't forget to hit the like button. Let's get to up to 200 <laughs> likes, baby. 200 likes. Make it happen. What you got, TD? Uh, just for the record, Josh Allen has beaten Skylar Thompson, uh, Fuck. Mac Jones, right, Mason man. Rudolph in the playoffs. Okay, Skylar Thompson, um, Mac Jones, and Jason Ru uh, Rudolph, or whatever his name is, in the playoffs. That's all you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. But listen, come back tomorrow and get in the huddle so they can get this heat. They can get this business, man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Thank you all so much for tuning in to another edition of The Huddle, ladies and gentlemen. We are live Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. EST. 300 of you were watching at one point. Beautiful thing. Only 159 like buttons. Smash out. Smash that like button for us if you were entertained at least for a moment, whether or not that it was TD's outfit or the absolute debate that we got in just a couple of minutes ago about the status of the Buffalo Bills. We love you guys. We're looking forward to tomorrow. We're going to be giving you a full preview of free agency targets for all three of our teams all across the NFL. Don't miss out. This is the number one off-season show regarding the NFL on the damn internet today. So subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you tomorrow.
Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you like what you saw, make sure that you subscribe, hit the like button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you never miss a show. If you like all sports content, make sure that you head over to betustv.com. Now let's go get some winners.